Hey guys, Justin here, and today I've got the review for you of the Slingbox 500. This is a device that allows you to stream your content from your cable box to your mobile device or computer, and it is something that I've lived by the whole time I've had it, and it definitely does an amazing job. You may know that Slingbox also has a Slingbox 350. This is their flagship, the Slingbox 500, that has built-in Wi-Fi and many other small features, and inside the box you will get the Slingbox, a quick start guide to guide you through your installation, a composite video cable, a component video cable, HDMI cable, stereo audio cable, ethernet cable, AC adapter, a remote control, and also an IR emitter. It is really great that they have included all this, though many of these cables are mainstream, I found myself not having to provide any of my own cables or anything, as not everybody may have extra cables lying around. So on the back you've got quite a few ports, you've got your power, your reset button, um, also a connectivity for your IR blaster in case you're quite a ways from your IR remote. You've also got a USB port as the Slingbox 500 actually allows you to stream media to other devices through this if you have any movies stored on a USB drive for example. You've also got an Ethernet port if you do not want to use the Wi-Fi function as it is a little bit more stable if you use Ethernet. You've got HDMI in and out and also your composite and component inputs. And the Slingbox 500 in particular has the output for the composite and component as well as the HDMI video. So in general the idea of this product is rather simple. You connect your Slingbox through to the source you want to stream and view remotely. You connect it to your Ethernet or your Wi-Fi in order to allow it to stream it to you and you can watch your favorite shows from anywhere. So giving you a very quick look at the instruction manual, you will see they guide you to connect it through an HD source or even just through an SD source. One thing to note if you're connecting through the HD source, which I'm pretty sure most of you are going to be doing, is not only just connect your HDMI in and then out, but also have the component cables connected if that is applicable, as some content is DRM blocked and it will not work. However, the component cable will fix that issue. So for me, I plugged in both the HDMI and the component and it works like a charm. It took me about 30 minutes to do the full setup. I was a little bit confused at some points, but the instruction will definitely guide you through and you should have no problems. That's what it looks like on my sling box in the end. And that's what it looks like in my cable box. So in general, I just plugged in everything there was into the places and I guess it did all work out properly. The HDMI and everything went through and after I turned it on and everything, there was really no issues at all. And even past the setup, it works very, very well for the past few weeks. I gotta say that the Slingbox is a very stylish device. My cable box is quite ugly, I guess. It looks pretty standard, but the Slingbox with its curves and everything looks very sharp on your setup. Like I mentioned with the Slingbox 500, they have also included a remote. That is an IR remote, and it has all your basic functions. On the top, you've got the Slingbox button to go to the Slingbox menu. Um, in order to kind of play with the settings, use the Sling Projector or the Sling Sync if you want to and there's also all the numbers also in navigation directional buttons play pause ok button etc it takes two AAA batteries they actually include third party but for some reason I always just want to put in my own batteries in there it's up to you and let's just go ahead and show you the quick settings on the actual sing box menu that you'll see on your TV so here is where you'll notice some of the differences between the sling box 500 and the sling box 350 First is the network. This actually supports both Wi-Fi as well as Ethernet. Um, if you have Ethernet nearby your TV, I definitely recommend using that as that will most likely be more stable. For me, I do have a strong Wi-Fi connection so I didn't really have too many issues at all. There's also your video input there and if you want to stream full HD video and have all your content played through, I definitely recommend plugging it through the component instead of the HDMI. They will also recommend that to you in the instruction manual. And you can also set your TV resolution and I'm sure most of you do have HD TVs, either 720p or 1080p. And next up, there's also the Sling Projector and the Sling Sync, something that you won't see in the Slingbox 300. What the Sling Projector does is it allows you to kind of stream your photos and content from your phone over to your big screen TV. And with Sling Sync, it allows you to plug in a USB drive or flash stick into the USB port of the Slingbox and stream your media to your device. So there you go, after you got all the network settings done and you also create an account to be able to sign in on your devices or your computer to access this and in general they do have a very good instruction manual that guides you through that, you're all good to go and you can now view everything on the mobile devices or even a computer. 
So now it's time to show you guys the navigation menu of the application. I'm on the iPad one here. It gives you all the major functions. You can set your quality, you can set your favorite channels that you want to quickly access. It also shows a guide based on your time zone and your channels that you may want to always watch, such as CBC, TSN, Sportsnet, um, Discovery Channel. It also shows what channel is currently playing and what's going next. You can also set the aspect ratio, something you won't really be playing with. Just set it to auto and you'll get the best resolution that it detects. And it also shows you what it's been connected to. And you can also set the quality based on your network strength. Set it to auto, to the highest definition, standard quality. It really just comes down to the speed of your network. So once again, back to the menu, you've also got your guide, which gives you a whole list of your channels that you may want to watch to pick what you want to watch. So that is very handy to have it right there. You don't have to go in the computer or grab your channel guide. And on the top, you've also got to log in if you want to share what channel you're actually watching to your friends on Facebook. And there's also a quick dial pad to be able to navigate to your favorite channel if you know the channel number. One last thing is there's also a remote that looks identical to the remote that you have. That is all in the setup of this application and the Slingbox itself. So it's all there for you. Once you've got it all set up, I think it's good to go. It works very well and I haven't had any issues ever since. On the navigation menu on the mobile application, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, it should be rather similar um, even compared to the one on the iPad. You have most of your major settings here. Again, you've got all your settings of the quality, the connectivity stuff, and you've also got your channel guide, which still shows you all your different channels that are playing, um, which is really great, even on the small screen. And there you've also got a quick dial pad, D-pad, keypad. I usually don't like to use those on the smaller devices. It makes it a little bit harder to navigate. And you've also got your favorites menu, your remote. Your remote, again, is just taking you back to the actual dial pad. You don't get the large remote that you saw on the iPad or on the computer. And going back to that, that is pretty much it. There really isn't much different on the mobile app. So now we run into some issues here. The app itself will cost you $15. And to make matters worse, if you purchase it for the iPhone, if you want to get it for your iPad as well, you're going to have to pay another $15, which in my opinion is absolutely crazy since you're paying $300 already for the Slingbox 500 and even $200 for the Slingbox 350. What is free though is watching it on your computer, something that I didn't find myself using as much as I did on my tablet and my smartphone, as that is very handy to carry around with you, but if you do not have a tablet, the computer one probably has the fullest experience in terms of being able to control your settings, view and navigate everything. You've also got your favorite channels, which for some reason when I was recording this, it didn't exactly work. However, on your computer, you could very easily open the tab through the sling box that shows you a full channel guide. And there it just shows you the bitrate of the video. I found myself having the least issues playing it back from my computer as I did have it connected through ethernet. However, even on a mobile device, I really only notice a stutter maybe once a day, for example. And here it just shows you the full channel guide which is really great it lets you show every single channel that you have there and they still have the full remote like i said it is exactly the same as my um telus remote from cisco so that allows you to navigate every single setting like you could on your tv you also have the option on the computer to play the video back as a tab so if you didn't want it to be on your mobile browser you just want it to be like a player on the side of your computer screen you can also do so so just to clarify things, the Slingbox is something that allows you to stream the video from your cable box to your computer or your mobile device, and it also allows you to remotely change your channel and the settings. However, for example, if I was watching Discovery Channel and somebody decided to jump on that same TV and pick up the remote and change it to TSN, I will see that on my mobile device. So it isn't going to just keep playing the same channel as you do only have one cable box in the end. And if I was to change the channel, vice versa, the person who is on the TV who is currently watching will also see the channel change as it is running off the same cable box. But in my case in particular, rarely anybody actually uses a TV, and I usually don't watch TV either as I don't want to sit down there and watch it. I'd rather just have something playing on my computer as I work. So this is a very handy product. I gotta say it is amazing. I love it so much. I've been using it every single day since, watching tons and tons of TV. 
and it definitely works very well and there really isn't anything bad for me to say about it. If you do find the price of $300 just a little bit steep, you can also go for the Singbox 350, but the main thing is that you must have a wired internet connection and if you have that, it will pretty much perform the same principal tasks of streaming your video signal to your mobile devices and computer. Really the only disadvantage I have to say in the end is that the mobile applications will cost you $15 um, for the tablet, the smartphones, so if you want it on your tablet and the smartphones it's going to cost you about $30, which I guess isn't too much if you already spent this much on the device, but at the same time I really don't understand why it isn't free, at least for the people who purchase the device. They should include like a promo code for you to go ahead and download the applications for free or something like that. But other than that, thanks for watching guys, be sure to check the links right under the like button for the pricing and availability, and a huge thanks to Slingbox for sending us out for reviewing purposes, and I'll see you all in the next video.